Welcome to Imaji Craft Hub. Ever wonder why money doesn't grow on trees, but chocolate, which is infinitely better, does? Let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer irony of life. Imagine a world where chocolate bars could be used as currency. Sweet, isn't it? Well, that's enough daydreaming. Let's dive into the heart of the matter. The fascinating process of making chocolate bars. From the humble beginnings in a cacao pod to the final mouth-watering product, the journey of a chocolate bar is a tale worth telling. It starts with the harvesting of cacao pods, transitions into the process of fermentation and drying, then onto roasting and grinding, and finally, the magical process of conching that gives chocolate its smooth, melt-in-your-mouth texture. And let's not forget the final transformation from a liquid gold to the solid bars of joy we all know and love. Stick around, because we're going on a deliciously educational journey on how these sweet treats are made. Our story begins in a place you might not expect, a farm. Indeed, our tale begins far from the hustle and bustle of the city, in a tranquil countryside where nature bestows its bounty and abundance. It is here that the story of your favorite irresistible melt-in-your-mouth chocolate bars unfolds. Imagine the crisp air, the rich soil, the wide open sky, this is the humble cradle of the sweet delicacy so adore. These chocolate bars which bring joy to the heart and tickle the taste buds, have their humble beginnings rooted deep in the earth of tropical farms. A farm might seem like an unusual birthplace for such a decadent treat. However, when you consider the magic that transpires within nature's embrace, it's not so surprising after all. This sweet tale of transformation begins amid the lavish greenery of the tropics where the sun kisses the earth with a warmth that nurtures life. Here, beneath the vibrant canopy of the rainforest, the life-giving soil cradles the seeds that, with time, will yield our coveted treat. Now you might be wondering how do we go from lush greenery to the velvety chocolate goodness we all cherish? How does such an ordinary beginning lead to an extraordinary end? Well, my curious friends, it all starts with a tree. But not just any tree, the Theobroma cacao tree. Theobroma in Greek literally translates to food of the gods. A resounding testament to the divine nature of this tree, wouldn't you say? These magnificent trees are quite the prima donnas of the plant realm, demanding just the right conditions to grow. They need a tropical climate, a steady supply of rainfall and respite from the harsh sun. Thus, they are planted in nurseries, in a harmonious dance with nature. After about six months, the seedlings are moved and planted under the canopy of taller protective trees that provide the needed shade. After three to five years of growth, these trees start to bear fruit. And what a sight they are. Like vibrant jewels adorning the tree, large, colorful pods protrude directly from the trunk. Each an exotic spectacle in itself is about the size of a pineapple and houses 20 to 60 seeds. These seeds, my friends, are our precious cacao beans. But don't be fooled by their humble appearance, they're not ready to be made into chocolate just yet. Harvesting these pods is a delicate, intricate process. The pods are carefully cut down to avoid damaging the precious tree or the beans inside. This isn't a job for the impatient as each pod must be hand-picked. It's a labor of love, a testament to the journey each cacao bean takes from the tree to your taste buds. A journey that's filled with patience, perseverance, and passion. Inside each pod the beans are nestled within a white, pulpy substance. While it might not look like much, this pulp plays a crucial role in the fermentation process that follows. A process that begins to unlock the distinct flavor profile we associate with chocolate. An exciting symphony of flavors, a tantalizing dance of sugars, acids, and enzymes, all converging to create the chocolatey delight we relish. And just like that, we've got our raw cacao pods, ready to be transformed into something marvelous. From the heart of the tropics to your kitchen pantry, that's the start of the chocolatey journey. A journey that speaks volumes about the intricate dance of nature and human ingenuity. Stay tuned to discover more about the transformation of these humble pods into the heavenly chocolate bars we all know and love. As we unravel the secrets behind every bite of your favorite chocolate bar, prepare to be amazed by the magic of nature and the miracles of human ingenuity. Now we've got our cacao pods but we're far from having a chocolate bar. Imagine you're preparing for a fancy dinner party or getting ready for a big date. You wouldn't just throw on any old thing and rush out the door, would you? Of course not. You'd take your time, choosing the perfect outfit, maybe even trying a new hairstyle. You'd want to present your best self, right? Well, the same goes for our cacao beans. First, we've got to get those beans out of the pods. It's a bit like cracking open a treasure chest, but instead of gold and jewels, we find cacao beans. They're not much to look at, all white and slimy, but trust me, they're the real treasure here. 
Once they're out of their pods, our beans need to go through a little transformation. They're not ready to become chocolate just yet. They need to be fermented. Now don't wrinkle your nose at the word, fermented. It's a natural process that brings out the cacao's flavor. A bit like letting a good wine breathe. After fermenting for about 5 to 7 days, our beans are dried. This is a delicate process, as we don't want to dry them out too much and lose that wonderful flavor. It's a bit like sunbathing but without the risk of sunburn. Finally we get to crush those beans into nibs. Think of this as the cacao's final makeover before the big reveal. Crushing the beans breaks them down into small, crunchy pieces or nibs. These nibs are the heart of our chocolate, full of flavor and ready to be transformed into the sweet treat we all know and love. So we've gone from tree to nib but we're not done yet. Next up, the real transformation begins. Now, we're about to step into a world of pure imagination where cacao nibs become silky smooth chocolate. Imagine a day at the spa. You're there, lounging in a warm bath, all your worries melting away. Now picture that, but for our humble cacao nibs, that's right folks, our little cacao nibs are about to get the pampering of a lifetime. This is where the magic happens, in a process called conching. Named after the shell-like shape of the original machine used, conching is where our coarse, gritty cacao nibs are transformed into the velvety, luxurious liquid we all know and love as chocolate. But how does this happen, you ask? Well, it's all thanks to friction. Our cacao nibs are placed into a conching machine, which is essentially a big rotating drum. As the drum spins, the nibs are ground against each other, and the sides of the drum. It's like a chocolate mosh pit if you will. Now this isn't a quick dip in the pool, no sir. This process can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days. It's a real commitment, but hey, beauty takes time, right? And as the nibs are ground down, they release their cocoa butter, which helps to create that smooth, fluid chocolate we can't get enough of. But it's not just about the texture, oh no. Conching also plays a crucial role in developing the flavor of our chocolate. As the cacao nibs are ground, they're also heated, and this heat helps to enhance their natural flavors and aromas. It's like a slow roasted dinner, but for your taste buds. And voila, we've got our liquid chocolate. But we're not quite ready to dig in just yet. There's still more magic to come, so stick around as we continue our journey into the heart of chocolate. We're in the home stretch now, folks. It's time to take this liquid gold and turn it into the chocolate bars we all know and love. You see, our chocolate's journey isn't over yet. It's just been through the grinder, it's been conched to perfection. But now we're getting to the grand finale. Tempering. Now tempering isn't a temper tantrum that your little one might throw when you deny them a chocolate bar. No, it's actually a process of heating and cooling the chocolate to give it that perfect snap and glossy finish. Imagine heating up the chocolate to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit, not too hot, just enough to melt all the cocoa butter crystals. Then the chocolatier cools it down to around 82 degrees, stirring it constantly. This is where the magic happens. The cocoa butter forms crystals that give the chocolate its structure. It's kind of like building a chocolate skyscraper, one crystal at a time, but we're not done yet. The chocolate is then reheated to about 90 degrees. This might seem like a chocolate sauna, but it's crucial to get rid of any remaining undesirable crystals. And voila, we have tempered chocolate. Now hold on to your sweet tooth because here comes the fun part. The tempered chocolate is poured into molds. It's like a little chocolate swimming pool, but you can't dive in, not yet. It's time for the final stage, cooling. This can be a real test of patience because it's at this point that it finally starts to look like the chocolate bars we're all familiar with. During the cooling, the chocolate contracts and can be easily removed from the mold. And there it is, a shiny, snappy, perfectly tempered chocolate bar that teases your senses. It's almost impossible to resist the temptation to take a bite. And there you have it, folks. From tree to treat, that's how a chocolate bar is made. Well, we've journeyed from the farm to the factory, and we've seen how a humble cacao pod becomes a delicious chocolate bar. It's been quite the trek, hasn't it? We've watched as the cacao pods were transformed into nibs, then melted down into a river of liquid gold. We've witnessed the mesmerizing dance of conching, where the chocolate takes on its silky smooth texture. And finally we saw the birth of our beloved chocolate bars. Now doesn't all this make you appreciate the next chocolate bar you munch on just a tad bit more? It's a lot of work, right? One might even say it's easier to just pop into the shop and pick up a bar, or ten. But hey, where's the fun in that? We wouldn't want to miss out on this deliciously sweet journey now, would we? Thanks for joining us on this sweet adventure. Remember, life is like a box of chocolates full of surprises.